Hi, this is Roy Aquaviti, and this is the second of two videos looking at my top five, well, top 10, but top five go-to whiskies. This is in response to a challenge that was set by the Scotch Test Dummies after they did a video of their top five go-to whiskies and they asked the other YouTube channels to come up with their top five go-tos as well. I had difficulty deciding what my top five were and I realised that I was trying to decide between things that I would always have in the cabinet, you know, the, the available whiskies, the, the staple evergreen whiskies that you always like to have there and my absolute favourites, the ones that I struggled to reach past. And that's what this video is going to concentrate on. My favourite whiskies that I love that's in the collection right now. Now I appreciate that some of the whiskies I'm going to share with you might be more difficult to get your hands on, but not so difficult. Nothing I'm going to share with you now is going to be impossible to get. There are no unicorn whiskies here. There are just whiskies that are perhaps a wee bit more expensive or a wee bit more difficult to seek out, but with a little bit of effort you can still get them. And the enjoyment and the engagement that you get from them is absolutely fantastic and worth the effort. So I guess what I'm saying there is that if you're a beginner um, and you're still struggling to maybe spend beyond a certain price point and things, this video is probably less relevant to you, but if you've got really into whiskey and the whiskey has bitten you and you've got the bug, then these five whiskies I'm going to share with you here are a really good way to kind of switch it up where you can really start to enjoy what single malt whiskey has to offer. There's also a whiskey in my top five absolute favourites that is not even a Scotch single malt. And that's where we kick things off. Number five is a bourbon. This is actually referred to the bottle of Wow by the Scotch Test Dummies. This is Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. This specific bottle that I have open is the 69.7% version from a couple of years ago. This was the original bottle of Wow. And I fully understand why it got that name. And anybody that cracks this open and tastes and shares this whiskey will understand completely why that is. This is not just a nice, good quality, engaging bourbon. This is an event whiskey. This is just a tidal wave of power and engagement and flavor and just a very, very deep, enjoyable, rich experience. And as you take it down layer by layer with water, you bring that close to 70% ABV down and bring it down and bring it down. You're getting to taste through all these shades of bourbon and how fantastic bourbon can actually be. This is expensive if you're in the UK and even in the States now, this Elijah Craig Barrel Proof in some areas is getting difficult to source. But try and track it down. Pay a little bit extra for it. It really is worth it and it will pay you back. It's fabulous stuff. And yes, I'm very grateful to have a backup. I'm going to stick with the theme of event whiskies for number four here. And that is a whiskey that was brought to me by another YouTube channel, Whiskey Wednesday, last year. They reviewed this whiskey and they were so blown away by it, they gave it a 10 out of 10. I didn't even get to the end of the video that I went online and bought one of the last few bottles of this remaining. I paid £90 for this and I'm very, very glad I did. This is a special edition Bunahaven Moigne Oloroso. So this is a Bunahaven from an Oloroso cask at 60.1%. Now, there's no age statement on this, but you really don't care. You pop this open, you put it in a glass, and immediately you're intimidated by that overwhelming power of the peat, the heavy, heavy, heavily peated Moigne in Bunahaven is peated. And it's that really, really heavily peated style of Bunahaven wrapped in this really, really rich and dark Oloroso package. It's one of those ones again, a bit like the ECBP, that just water is your friend. It's wonderful to sip, neat, but as you take it down layer by layer, you realize just how much this has got to offer. It's fantastic stuff, and this will be tricky. I think you're looking at auctions or collectors to get a hold of a bottle of this now, even although it's only a year old. If you do see any of these out in the wild, I would grab it on site. I would say I paid 90 pounds for this, and it was very good value for that, and I would pay a wee bit more than that for it. 
Um, I think it's just such a wonderful whiskey. There are other Moigno Oloroso expressions available from Bunahaven, but the one you're looking for is the 2017 Moigno Oloroso that looks like this. Fantastic stuff and worthy of a place in my top five favorite whiskies right now. Now, number three is from an independent bottler. And this independent bottler has quite a lot of stock of this particular whiskey I'm going to share with you, but it's single cask expression. So there's lots of different cask numbers. And I've found three of them that I've tasted recently of the three that I've purchased to be fantastic. But between the Whiskey Rev and I, there was one cask number that we've got through five bottles between us of. We just love it so much. It's fantastic stuff. It's Klein Leash from Signatory Vintage. Now, in this hand, I've got cast number 11228. Um, and this was very good, but it was a, a slightly different flavor profile from the original one that got me really, really into this stuff. This is a more kind of creamier, uh, lighter expression of the same at 55.7%. Now, this one is a little bit lighter at 53.6%, but this is the cask that we get through so many bottles of. This is 8687, and it's just fantastic whiskey. Fortunately, Signature Vintage have enough stock for there to be lots of this available now and in the future. But I would say if you're out there and you're looking at somewhere in the region of 20, 21, 22 year old Klein Leash and even a wee bit younger, that you know it's from this parcel of stock and it could be a sister cask of this. I would try it before you buy it by all means, but to be honest, it's Klein Leash from Signature Vintage. It's probably going to be great. Now, when I started to buy this, it was about £89 and it's crept up to about £125, £130 now and thereabouts. And each release, it's going to continue to get a wee bit more expensive. But remember the age of this whiskey, the fact it's from one of Scotland's best distilleries and it's absolutely gorgeous. It takes water very, very well, but doesn't need it honestly. Fantastic stuff. I don't have any more of this. This is the very, very last of it, but I'm constantly on the lookout. That brings me to number two. And I'm going to go back to Phil at Whiskey Wednesday again, because this is another 10 out of 10 whiskey from him last year. This is a special edition. This is an annual release from Diageo. You've probably already guessed what it is if you know me and you watch me at all. This is what I named my whiskey of the year last year. This is Lagavulin 12 2017 release. Now, Lagavulin 12 is always a solid release of Lagavulin. The 12 year old is presented at cast strength, so there's that extra engagement and grip there. And the peat is that bit more forward than it is on the 16 year old sibling. This is quite a bit more expensive than the 16 year old. You probably pay about 90 to 100 pounds for this at retail. I would say that it's worth it though, and especially the 2017 release because it just came with this amazing collection of vanillas and biscuity malty notes and sweet creaminess, but it was delivered with this really quite velvet texture that is just so, so addictive. And it really makes this one of those whiskies that's really hard for me to reach past. If I'm in the mood for peat, this is just what I seem to be reaching for just now. And this is me almost finished my, I believe this to be my second or perhaps it could be my third bottle of this. But I just love it so and I love to share it and I love watching people's reaction when they enjoy it as well. Now, unfortunately, with this being the 2017 release, and as this video was out, we're got kind of approaching the 2018 12-year-old release, this 2017 might be more tricky to track down, but there's plenty of it out there, and you probably will find, if you look for it, you'll happen upon it, and it's certainly worth picking up. In fact, Alexa, do you have any Lagavulin 12 2017? Sorry, I don't know that one. So you see, not everything is that easy, but fortunately in the UK, we have the specialist retailers as well. This is the last bottle available at Master of Malt. The Whiskey Exchange still has some left. So what is it that's going to beat my Whiskey of the Year last year to my favourite whisky, the one that I struggle to reach past most right now. Well, it is quite a special whisky and it's special to me in terms of a distillery and where it landed in my whisky journey. It's special to me in the expression that it is, but it's also special because of the value that this whisky offers. This is Glengoyne. 
This is Glengoin, 25 year old. Yes, this is expensive. But I want you to pause for a second and think about this. This is exclusively matured for 25 years in Oloroso sherry casks. It's a single malt scotch whiskey and it costs 260 pounds. 260 pounds is a lot of money for anybody. But I would say the quality of this means that its peers are significantly more expensive than that. Significantly so. I predict that this whiskey will only creep up in price as more and more of it is released. We hope it's going to continue to be released because this is just delicious stuff. You sit down in the right moment with friends or on your own and you sip a glass of this and everything in the world outside dissolves away and you just become so focused on the liquid in the glass. It's wonderful, wonderful and very clean sherry, I have to say, a very clean sherry experience. It's very, very difficult for me to spend this amount of money on a bottle of whiskey. But, on a recent trip to Glengoyne, that's exactly what I did. I went back up and picked up another one of these because that is not going to last much longer in the cabinet and there will come a day soon that I'm going to be in that mood for a delicious glass of Glengoy 25, reach for it and it's going to be gone. And perhaps by that time it's going to be a lot more expensive than £260 to replace. Now I appreciate what I've shared with you here. I've shared with you whiskies that are often out of the reach of most people when they're on their whiskey journey. Some of these are expensive, but that was the point of this video and that's why I had to separate it from the top five good value, easy and available whiskies versus this kind of top five favorite whiskies. I knew there would be people out there who would be super curious to discover what I enjoy sharing at home most, my absolute favorite whiskies, the ones that really command your attention and really help you understand how fantastic whiskey can be. So there you have it, that's my top five can't reach pasts. Thanks for watching and let us know in the comments below what your top five whiskies are that you can't reach past. I'd like to thank the Scotch Test Dummies as well for this cool challenge and I hope, as I've said before, that other channels get involved and share what their top five go-tos and perhaps even what their top five favourite ever whiskies are. This has been Roy Aquaviti and until next time, slancha. Yeah. Yeah.